Hello, we are on Lesson 96, A Course in Miracles, Workbook for Students, Part 1 of the Workbook. Lesson 96, Salvation Comes from My One Self. Although you are one self, you experience yourself as two, as both good and evil, loving and hating, mind and body. This sense of being split into opposites must induce feelings of acute and constant conflict and lead to frantic attempts to reconcile the contradictory aspects of this self-perception. You have sought many such solutions and none of them has worked. The opposites in you, I'm sorry, the opposites you see in you can never be compatible. Only one exists. I'm going to slide my book over here to make it easier. The fact that truth and illusion cannot be reconciled no matter how you try, what means you use, and where you see the problem must be accepted if you would be saved. Until you have accepted this, you will attempt an endless list of goals you cannot reach a senseless series of expenditures of time and effort, hopefulness and doubt, each one as futile as the one before, and failing as the next one surely will. Problems which have no meaning cannot be resolved within the framework they are set. Two selves in conflict could not be resolved, and good and even evil have no meeting place. The self you made can never be your self, nor can your self be split in two and still be what it is, and must forever be. A mind and body cannot both exist. Make no attempt to reconcile the two, for one denies the other can be real. If you are physical, your mind is gone from your self-concept, for it has no place in which it could really be in which it could be really part of you. If you are spirit, then the body must be meaningless to your reality. Spirit makes use of mind as means to find its self-expression. And the mind that serves the spirit is at peace and filled with joy. Its power comes from spirit and it is fulfilling happily its function here. Yet mind can also see itself divorced from spirit and perceive itself within a body it confuses with itself. Without its function then it has no peace and happiness is alien to its thoughts. Yet mind apart from spirit cannot think. It has denied its source of strength and sees itself as helpless, limited, and weak. Disassociated from its function now, it's, it thinks it's alone and separate, attacked by armies massed against itself and hiding in the body's frail support. Now must it reconcile unlike with like, for this is what it thinks that it is for. Waste no more time on this. Who can resolve the senseless conflicts which your dream presents? What could the resolution... Excuse me, what could the resolution mean in truth? What purpose could it serve? What is it for? Salvation does not make illusions real and solve a problem that does not exist. Perhaps you hope it can. Yet would you have God's plan for the release of his dear son bring pain to him and fail to set him free? Your self retains its thoughts and they remain within your mind and in the mind of God. The Holy Spirit holds salvation in your mind and offers it, it the way to peace. Salvation is a thought you share with God because His voice accepted it for you and answered in your name that it was done. Thus is salvation kept among the thoughts your self holds dear and cherishes for you. We will attempt today to find this thought whose presence is in your mind, I'm sorry, whose presence in your mind is guaranteed by Him 
who speaks to you from your oneself. Our uh, hourly five-minute practices will be a search for Him within your mind. Salvation comes from this one self through Him who is the bridge between your mind and it. Wait patiently and let Him speak to you about yourself and what your mind can do, restored to it and free to serve its will. Begin by saying this, Salvation comes from my one self. Its thoughts are mine to use. Then seek its thoughts and claim them as your own. These are your own real thoughts you have denied, letting your mind go wandering in a world of dreams to find illusions in their place. Here are your thoughts, the only ones you have. Salvation is among them. Find it, he find it there. If you succeed, the thoughts that come to you will, re will teach you. I'm sorry. If you succeed, the thoughts that come to you will teach you you are saved and that your mind has found the function that it sought to lose. Yourself will welcome it and give it peace. Restored in strength, it will again flow out from spirit to the spirit in all things created by the spirit as itself. Your mind will bless all things. Confusion done, you are restored, for you have found yourself. Yourself knows that you cannot fail today. Perhaps your mind remains uncertain yet a little while. Be not dismayed by this. The joy yourself experiences, it will save for you. And it will yet be yours in full awareness. Every time you spend five minutes of the hour seeking Him who, jo I'm sorry, who joins your mind and self, you offer Him another treasure to be kept for you. Each time today you tell your frantic mind salvation comes from your, your one self, you add another treasure to your growing store. And all of it is given everyone who asks for it and will accept the gift. Think then how much is given unto you to give this day that it be given you. And we have a footnote 149. Perhaps your mind remains uncertain yet a little while. Be not dismayed by this. The phrase, be not dismayed, occurs several times in the Bible. See, for example, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Be not dismayed. Lesson 96 salvation comes from my one self and this is why I like to read along because you, when I read last year I just read with my face facing the camera and you can't see the the capitalization which is totally changes the um, the meaning of the word such as oneself through him who is the bridge between your mind and it. When I, you know, when I read it to the camera, you, you, I tried to let you know when it was capitalized, but um, this is so much better because you can see the words and you can see what's capitalized. And of course, when it's capitalized, it means it's holy and it's of God. <clears throat> anyway, I will be back with the commentary by wonderful Robert Perry and Alan Watson for lesson 96 salvation comes from my one self I love you thank in you. the commentary by Robert Perry and Alan Watson lesson 96 salvation comes from my one self practice instructions the purpose is to find the thought of salvation deep within your mind and let it restore your mind to its true function of blessing all minds. Longer practice period, 
um, every hour on the hour for five minutes. If you cannot do this, at least do the alternative. Say, salvation comes from my one self. Its thoughts are mine to use. The remainder seems to be a combination of meditation in which you try to contact your real thoughts, as in Lesson 45, and listening to the Holy Spirit in which you listen for spiritual teaching, as in Lesson 76. Search deep within your mind for the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is there to speak to you your true thoughts, the thoughts of your true self. In particular, the thought of salvation. If you succeed, thoughts will come to you telling you that you are saved and you can save. These thoughts are more than just information. They will fill your mind with strength, enabling it to bless all minds. Remember the training you've received both in meditation and in listening to the Holy Spirit. Hold your mind in a state of quiet attentiveness. Listen in confidence and draw your mind back from wandering when necessary. Frequent reminders. I apologize. Frequent reminders. As often as possible, repeat the idea while you do imagine that you are laying another treasure in your treasure house. A treasure you can claim any time you want. If you will, go ahead and repeat the idea in this fashion now. Salvation comes from my one self. Encouragement to practice. You may feel uncertain of success today, but your self knows you cannot fail. Your practice will bring joy to it, and it will save this joy for you. Storing it in your treasure house until you are ready to take it out and experience it. Commentary. I have this dog breathing down my neck here, so I hope she keeps shaking into me. She loves attention, of course, when I'm not when I'm doing something else, like a child. Commentary. Although you are one self, you experience yourself as two. Experiencing ourselves as divided is a universal experience. Even the very practice of these lessons makes it evident to us. On the one hand, we want to do the practice because we want to go to God. We want enlightenment. On the other hand, when the hour comes and it is time to take our five minutes, something in us resists doing it. It seems as if there are two selves in us, one good and the other bad, one wanting the light and the other holding onto the darkness. Most of my life I lived with this, believing my experience was the truth. Something in me, however, told me it was not so. How could I be two selves? How could I have two natures? As my Christian back, background taught me, fresh flesh and spirit. It didn't make sense. The nature of something, of anything, is always one. The Course explains that one spirit, one spirit is real. The other, the separated self that experiences being a body, is unreal. Nothing more than a figment of my imagination. I am not divided, and all evidence to the contrary is a trick of the mind, a self-deception. Based on the illusion of being split into opposites, the mind has sought many solutions. It has been duped into believing in the reality of this split and the reality of physical being. Therefore, it occupies itself endlessly trying to make things work and they never do. The mind becomes the servant of the body trying to devise ways to make the body comfortable, to pleasure it, to make it last forever, to keep it safe from harm. In doing this, the mind has lost its true function. 
Our one self is spirit in its preoccupation with the body the mind has for the most part lost sight of spirit. It needs to regain its true function of serving spirit. Spirit makes use of the mind as, me, as means to find its self-expression. This is what brings us peace and fills the mind with joy, while serving the body brings it nothing but conflict and pain. The thoughts of spirit seek expression through our minds. That is what minds are for. The Holy Spirit is an agent of divine help bringing the mind back to its true function of serving spirit. He is the representative of spirit of our self to our minds, constantly calling us to set aside this futile fumbling for salvation in the realm of the physical and to open our minds to spirit. If you are spirit, then the body must be meaningless to your reality. Because we have dissociated our minds from their true function, we think we are alone and separate. We need a helper who reminds us of our true connection to spirit. Our spirit, our self, retains its thoughts and they remain within your mind and in the mind of God. We remain in spirit as God created us. So we are not trying to change what our minds are, but rather the purpose they serve. We are seeking in these exercises to reconnect to spirit. To, wait, where, to reconnect to spirit, to set aside for five minutes the thoroughly distracting problems of the physical beings we think we are, and to open ourselves to these thoughts of spirit, to, our allow, to allow our minds to find their function as channels for spirit. Restored in strength, it, the mind, will again flow out from spirit to the spirit in all things created by the spirit as itself. Your mind will bless all things. That is our function. That is what we are created for. The extension of God's being is spirit's only function. So I, am so I am rediscovering myself as an extender of God's being. God is love and so I love. God creates so I create, which here on earth is expressed as healing, as restoring creation to its natural state. This self that the Course is talking about is not something apart from me. It is me. Talking about seeking the thoughts of my one self almost makes it seem as if the self is this separate being I am seeking to communicate with. But the self is me. Here you are. This is you, it said in Lesson 93. We are bringing the mind into contact with our spirit, but it is already me. The light is already in me. The thoughts I am seeking are my own thoughts. I have disassociated right out of my mental awareness. What we are asking to practice here is not described in great detail. You may be asking yourself, What is it we are waiting for as we sit for five minutes? And I can't tell you. No one can. You will know when you find it. The lesson recognizes that we may not connect today. It uses words like, if you succeed, 10-1, emphasis mine. And perhaps your mind remains uncertain yet a while. It tells us not to be dismayed if this is so. Relax with it. Be patient. Do the exercises anyway. Every time you do yourself, every time you do, yourself rejoices. Even if that joy does not penetrate yet into your conscious mind, and it saves the joy, ready to bring it to you in full awareness when you do succeed and become certain of your one self. Thank you so much for joining with me. Lesson 96 Salvation comes from my one self. I love you.